Well, 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 I think we've seen a, a first session to this match that was yep, one that provided Here's more questions than answers. Things you know to break. It really is intriguingly poised. We know wiser now than we were at the start of the evening. I do, though, agree with Neil Folds and Stephen Hendry. I think the conclusion of the fourth frame, while no guarantee of success, will provide Neil Robertson with great encouragement. Three real pressure pots in that mini clearance. And when all is said and done, that could be the pivotal moment. Well, that shot completely backfired, and to get away with it, how fortunate. There's nothing worse than your opponent making a, a pig's ear of a shot and causing no damage. All things considered, Stephen, I don't think we could have asked for a better day than this, and certainly the way it's going to finish will be compelling stuff. Yeah, I think it was a, a very tough group to pick a winner of. I think, obviously, Jimmy was the, the rank outsider. It would have been a massive shock if he'd have prevailed, but, um, yeah, I don't think... I haven't expected anyone, the other three players, to sail away with it. I don't know what you think, Phil. I think Ding, out of these two players probably prefer tactical frames 
Neil Robertson, whether he can play them, I think he's, he'd rather be of his shot time down at sort of 18 seconds making century breaks. Yes, he, he can get involved and he does. But I don't think it's to his advantage, I think it's to his detriment. You're right, he's a scorer, that's where he... He has the, the biggest edge. Taking a chance here, Ding Junhui. He knew there was a chance of leaving this red to left corner, and he has done. Trying to get the cue ball in behind the yellow. It's not easy though. It's going to get that cue ball around the back of the black. Such a good long potter and your Robertson surprise every time he misses one. And he left one for Ding Junhui this time to the right corner. And there's a gap. Oh, he's turning it down. Turned down a couple this afternoon against John Higgins. I don't know whether it's a game plan or whether he's just not confident in his long game at the moment. Because we're in this bio bubble, we all have to wear wristbands. Today's colour is green. You can see it on Neil Robertson's wrist there. After the third frame, it was bothering Ding. So he actually came backstage and said, Can I remove it and just keep it in the pocket? I think players are allowed to do that. Well, I'm sure they are. Some it doesn't bother in the slightest, others feel encumbered by it. Inhibited. Tell you what, you're right, Stephen. Robertson's potting from distance nowhere near as sharp as normal. Well, it's only the pace that Neil played that at that made the red drop any harder. I don't think it would have gone. Eight. Nine.
No, definitely into the reds here. The red closest to the black. Stun into that. Full pace. Played it perfectly. And at first glance, I mean, it doesn't appear to have anything easy. It's got a red to right middle, but. 16. It's a more acute angle than it looks here on the screen. But you couldn't have hit that any better. already missed a much easier red than this into this middle pocket in the first frame, cost him the frame. If he misses this one it could cost him this one as well. He's got a choice of two, let me play the one further up the table. It's a slightly easier pot, but he's just got to judge the path of the cue ball for position. Yeah, Robertson 16. There wasn't an awful lot of pocket to aim for. The way these middle pockets are cut, they are brutal. And that kind of shot can be really deceptive on screen. Looks relatively simple, but the target is so tiny. Well, that was a wonderful bit of queuing, and he's a bit unfortunate, you'd have to say. The little brush on the green has left him awkward. Still cuts to the right corner, but kind of guessing a little bit where the cue ball is going to end up. And it's Ding Jin Wee's turn to be very unlucky. I could have expected a pot a lot easier than this. The opening red, though, was magnificent. Took over a minute to think of this, and it was worth waiting for. I think rhythm is a problem for both players. If you look at the average shot time of Ding, it's 23 seconds. For Robertson, it's 24. Now, bear in mind, it was around the 18, 19 second mark when he was playing Jimmy White this afternoon. It's born of, yeah, some scrappy frames, but also indecision. Can't really get a flow going, either player. One.
5. Twelve. Always played for the plant, maybe. I prefer to have the cue ball a little bit away from the cushion. It's not a gimme this, as you can see the red is touching the jaw, the one closest to the pocket, but it's played 17. it nicely. <clears throat> I expect Neil to go on and win the frame at this visit, but it's been one or two unexpected misses tonight. And has that gone wrong? Yeah, he's going to have to play red to the far right corner. A little bit careless that. You could, I don't think you could call that bad luck. I think that red was always over the left corner pocket. Should have got into the cue ball a bit more. Total concentration to make sure I potted the green there. 24. To leave himself from distance in this red. In the left corner pocket. There's a drag. Not the choice of black to right corner or pink to right middle. Twenty-five. Nicely played. One of Robertson's core strengths is reliability 31. in the balls. Thirty-two. Didn't quite get into the cue ball as much as he wanted to there, though. And how this read into a semi blind pocket is most certainly missable. Thirteen. Nine. So Robertson, 54 ahead, still work to do. 42. 67 on the table.
Well, that should have been frame Hot ball. Eight. 60 in front, 59 on. One more red needed, and it's a certainty this frame. There it goes. 14. And so for the first time, Robertson will hit the front. Now the quest is for another century. 56. 57. And when it comes to scoring, these two normally bring the best out in each other. Robertson's 139 in the second frame was the 29th century. 63. These two have made against each other in professional competition. Robertson 15, Ding 14. 64. And another one could be forthcoming here. Seventy-one. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the season 72. pans out in terms of century breaks, because obviously Judd, Neil's teammate, made over a hundred last season, and I think they'll privately they'll want to beat the other one this year in terms of scoring. Seventy seven. Yeah, I think privately is the operative word. They'll never admit it, but you just know they want to do 79. it. Seventy nine. Eighty two. Six. Ninety one. Ninety seven. The Black for his fourth century of the day. 104. And a he is a brave building Robert. machine of that, there is no doubt. This match is in doubt. Right now, though, Robertson is in the ascendancy just at 3 2.
Welcome back to the Marshall Arena it's and this six. wonderful arena that's been assembled for the champion of champions. Now, talking of wonderful, what a quarter final this is. Two of Snooker's finest international players. Obviously, Cliff Thorburn from Canada, who won the World Championship in 1980, has to be on the list. But in terms of pure world ranking titles won, these two are the cream. Didn't seem to hit that well. Ding Jun Wee seemed to hit at it rather than cue it. Both shots really you know, smooth, straight cueing. Didn't seem to have done too much damage. I think this red is cuttable. Obviously not. I think one of the stars of the show today has been these rats on table. Just gliding over the surface, the cue ball. the difference between the shot Dinger and we played the shots are going you know, Robertson that was cued as sweetly as you like just the sound was different six it's beautiful with an element of safety, taking the cue ball over to the left hand cushion. Seven. Just wonder whether Neil thinks to himself there's a time to take this match with a scruff of the neck, stamp his authority on it.
Yeah, Robert's obviously not seven. Three shots that he played previously. An inexplicable miss, really. Yes, that left hand middle pocket as we're looking. I've been too kind to Robertson. That's where he missed the Dolly Red, of course, earlier. One. The Dolly Frame Ball Red. And the pink going astray could be equally expensive. Seven. Eight. My little bit red obviously it's closest to the black to go. Doesn't you can see that red next to it. it does pop, but maybe a good shot for position in the next colour. Yeah, another shot with very, very quick backswing. No time in there at all. 14. He hasn't got the Q power of his opponent, but still had plenty of Q power to get the Q ball up the table, but it was not a good bit of queuing from Ding Jun Wee. I was talking to Ken Doherty at the mid-session interval, and he was making exactly the same observation. It's the kind of technical deficiency you don't expect from him, but it's definitely been there this evening. And Ding's excellent safety, two shots ago, has yielded a dividend. Pot shouldn't be a problem. Guiding that cue ball to get position of colour will be. One. Ding Jun Ho won.
trust at the table. And it stayed on a very straight and true line. One. Well, it's a fortuitous one-point bonus, but more importantly, the ability here to put Robertson in some trouble. Yeah, it'd be a brave shot to take the brown on, I think. Well, you see him just roll up to the green because I think that'll block the left-hand side of the table. Danger, no. One. It'll be very difficult bringing Robertson to get the cue ball back up the table again if not impossible. Wait. Roll up to the red. Neil must have known he was going to leave that red. I don't know if he came down to the end of the table to have a look, but if he did know it was there, he obviously took a calculated risk that his opponent might miss it, but it was a nice pot from Ding Jin Wei into quite a, an acute angle to the left middle. It's given him a good chance. Seven. Strange shot, that Phil, Neil Robertson. Eight. Yes, agreed, and now that helped matters as well. Splitting those two reds and dropping very nicely on the pink. Fourteen. It's about time Ding started to produce. OK, he won the UK Championship last season, but it was... Solitary display of excellence 15. from him, really. Now, here's that roll down the table from Robertson. And you can see the red that was available for Ding. Yeah, I just don't think he even took it into consideration. You can see he possibly was looking at one of the monitors there and maybe realised the error that he made. Meanwhile... That is an error from Ding Jun Wei. I'll just screw back at least 21. another three inches for the red that's close to the black spot. He was conscious of overscrewing and snookering himself with the red to the left of the one he was playing for. But it's end of break. Twenty-one. 
follow the message. Thank you, Noi Four. Yep. Just took a cursory look at that, realised that there was no future in any red, and so yep. put the cue ball back. That's the scene here at the Marshall Arena in Milton Keynes. No audience, of course. That's a great pity, but this arena has been dressed immaculately. And the prize alone, plus the cast list here, guarantees excellence in tension. The last couple of frames have been close to 25 minutes, lengthy by modern standards. And this one is fast approaching 20 minutes. Lots of mutual respect out there.
Well, Ding hates that one. That's well short of where he wanted to be with the white. Stephen, this was a, a real lapse, wasn't it? Yeah, his safety play's been very good. So far, Ding Chun Wei. Over 80%, which is pretty decent. And that was a careless one. And Robertson will be looking at this as a chance to open a two-frame gap. Obviously Eight. wants the red away that's closest to the right corner pocket. That's blocking the path for red and I think black to, to pot there. Just looking to see where exactly he wants to leave the cue ball in a couple of shots time. Maybe even now from this pink. Just virtually leave the cue ball almost where the pink is. Fourteen. Fifteen. You can see it's going to be a thinner cut to the right corner than it looks on that, that screen. Which means it's not easy to control the cue ball. Twenty one, twenty two. Not ideal, especially for a left hander, but workable. Far from easy to win the frame at this visit. The problem of these last two reds and the green and the bolt cushion. May choose to try and cannon the other red off the cushion here in potting this one. Leave himself on the black. Cushion first, flick the red half ball. Played to perfection, doesn't want the 30. tie up by the blue, he's okay. You're right about the green though, Stephen is a potential hurdle. Remember the fourth frame, 37. Ding had a green to the yellow pocket that looked in, but didn't go in. Yeah, I thought we may have been looking at the possibility of playing a cannon on the green there off the red. I think it was worth a go. If he misses the green completely, you think it's bound to be on some sort of pot. But I might have taken the risk there. Played that shot nicely. Beautiful angle on the yellow. 42. Could play a cannon or he's got a nice angle just to get as close as possible to the green. Those little shots, that they look so easy. That little brownie played there, but it was so easy just to 
decelerate and not screw the cue ball back at all or over screw it. They played it to perfection. Beautiful touch. Forty four. But I can't say the same about that shot. If he's dead straight in the green, it's no good. When pace is required on this kind of shot, time and again you see the ball wobble. Forty-seven. No great positional ambition there, meaning this brown is missable. Oh, but equal 51. to the task. Terrific. And now the blue is frame ball. Fifty-six. Near Robertson. A two-frame gap. And a frame. Has appeared. You know, he's made two centuries tonight, Robertson. For the fourth frame, and now the sixth, which he snatched from well behind, they'll sting the most. This is the 888 Sport Champion of Champions. And for the second time already this season, Neil Robertson is attempting to successfully defend a title. He didn't do it at the European Masters. The tournament that started the campaign, he was beaten in the quarterfinals 5-4 by Sean Murphy. But he's looking good here. At times tonight, Deng must have fancied his chances, but... Robertson has won the last three frames, and Stephen, the way he won the sixth there, that's ominous for China's number one. Yeah, that was a fabulous break to win that sixth frame. Played three or four Thank lovely you. shots. It's the seventh frame, danger no to break. So yeah, three frames in a row, the wrong way. Ding needs to stop the rot. There's two frames behind in the semi-final this afternoon to John Higgins. Came through. And you always have a bit more hope when your opponent needs two frames for victory. So there's plenty of time in this match for Ding Junhui.
Oh, Miss mm. Miss Ding Jun Hoi Six didn't behave. You're playing with fire, um, continually just tickling into the reds from distance. It was too much effect, wasn't it? And that didn't even graze the pink, it caught it, maybe caught a ball. We can bring it on, but... Yeah. Can we just bring it on, please, Tatiana? Very interesting to me that Ding doesn't fancy Mostly the red to the left pink. of the blue. It shows me he's not Definitely confident went, in himself in middle and long distance pots. If I'm Neil Robertson, I'm quite happy that he wants the cue ball replaced. Okay, it's a dangerous shot, but at this level, I think you've got to be taking those reds on. This here. Talk about the international development of the game. We've got an Australian uh, against the Chinese the player here. Move. The referee is German. Slightly. The marker is from Belarus. No. Yeah, I thought it was a faction more. Are you okay? Um, yeah, because I'm trying to run dead right so that Oh, okay. But if I hit this. Calling yeah. to the screen is fine, yeah, Tatiana. Yeah. Thank you, Tatiana. Do you know? Yep. Yeah. Yes. What a sound that made. One. That really did hit in the middle of the back of that pocket. Near yeah, Robertson what? Foul in a miss. Danger no four. Yeah. These penalty points, no material concern yet for Robertson, but they are mildly irritating.
of course with no tournaments in China at the moment Ding's legion of fans back home have to watch in the middle of the night if they want to see their hero and those who have stayed up very late will be hoping for a comeback But Stephen, the signs aren't good. No, you just get the general feeling that Neil Robertson is starting to take control of this match. Then he needs to find a gear from somewhere. stopped in time well the black does go you've got better commentators I than me Phil I must be honest I've got a monitor up here with a camera that wasn't being used so it wasn't Eight. a cheat I'm too honest for my own good Stephen as a, a top player top sportsman Neil Robertson will be able to sense weakness in his opponent maybe sensing this is the time to really press home his advantage no Keep the pressure on. Eleven. Seventeen. Eighteen. Robertson really does warm to this champion of champions. He's trying to reach the semi-finals of this event for the fifth time. And if he does prevail tonight, it would be his 66th semi-final in all professional competition. Twenty five, twenty six, yeah, he obviously tries to win every event he plays in, but I think he really these events that involve all the best players in the world and a one table setup really gets his his juices flowing. 
He really seems to want to prove himself against the other best players in the world. There's no need to artificially hype this tournament. Its stature just rises with every single season. And the players actually almost unanimously love it. 33. Thirty-four. I think the, the unique format is, is I've not played in it. Must it must be great to play in because you you feel like you're involved at the business 41. end straight away, even though it's technically the last sixteen. You're actually playing two semi-finals and a final. So you you feel you're straight in at the business end. Of a tournament. Forty two. There are so many great things about the snooker tour now. Forty eight. Ten years into Barry Hearn's stewardship, which has been brilliant, let's face it. And I think one of the great aspects of the tour is it's variety, so many different formats and distances. Nothing stale, it's all fresh. Forty nine. Fifty-six. Neil Robertson, fifty-six. Conservatively, he's missed four balls into that pocket this evening. Might have been more than that. That was a real surprise. Now then, has the pendulum swung? OK, Ding is 47 behind, but there's ample on the table to erase that deficit and kick on. One. I don't know whether in pot in this Eight. red to red mid, uh, right middle it'll free the bottom of the two reds to right corner that's what Ding came around the table to have a look at tough Nine. ask to win the frame at this visit oh, that 
Those is all we need to know. This red obviously does pot. 16. Seventeen. It's finished high in the black, so you can the red that's on the black cushion. Possibly we can play a little cannon to try and promote the red towards the left corner. But he needs the red. I think if he's got a perfect angle in the black, he should play for it now. And yeah, played the cannon. Nicely played as well. Twenty-four. 25. Mm, we have just lost the cue ball slightly. Still shouldn't be a problem. But it just has to put a little bit extra into the cue ball as you can see. And again, played very well. And how did he solve the problem? The last red in the left cushion. He won earlier on, it went in very easily down the cushion with the rest. I think it was Ding actually that played it. Yeah, but he didn't pop that penultimate red too well. Caught it a little too thick, that's why there was not enough movement on the cue ball. 30. Resigned to ending the break and trying to put Robertson in the tall grass. 39. 39. Well, in the end, it's a decent shot, but it's not the way he played it. He didn't play for the cue ball to go in between green and brown. But it's a great result, and he's right back in this frame. Reliable distance thing, but he should get this. One. Of course, he would have preferred the green to remain on its spot. But it's not too near a cushion, so shouldn't pose a great issue. to clear down to the pink. Five. Clever way of playing that shot, two cushions. You try and judge the pace off just one cushion, it's a lot more difficult. Playing off two cushions give you much more margin for error on that shot from yellow to green. Wriggled in. Eight. Both players 100% using the rest tonight when trying to pot a ball. Twelve. Oh, but the cue ball just travels on a little.
17. Twenty-three. The pendulum has swung again. Thirty. And a frame. On a break of fifty-six, Neil Robertson was seemingly steaming towards a five-two lead, but he missed a red to middle. No one envisaged, and now it's four-three. Okay, yeah. The eighth frame, Neil Robertson to break. Neil Robertson was sitting in his chair in between frames looking suitably unimpressed. He knows for all intents and purposes he should be 5-2 in front on the cusp of victory. Now though at 4-3 there is still work to do and Neil Foles you know used a word earlier on about Ding in relation to the match against John Higgins saying that he displayed stickability well that's what he's doing here one that was an excellent long pop seems if Cannons has left himself my choice of pink or black Mm, that was a lovely shot. That was almost as good as a long pot. His cue ball control is just amazing, isn't it? That was such a classy shot. Nine. Lovely angle in the black. Again, the red that's closest to the black that's at the bottom of the bunch. Stun into that one. Try and hold the cue ball in the middle of the table. No, he doesn't look like he's playing into the bunch, is he? He seemed to address the cue ball near the top and then gradually go lower. He's definitely low now. And yeah, played the shot that suggested and played it beautifully. That's the secret to going into the bunch, holding that cue ball in the middle of the table, then you're more often than not going to land 16. on a, your next red. The minute you lose the cue ball to the cushions, that's when you're in trouble. Unbelievable, I'm afraid. 16. An incredible miss, really. With the way he started to break the balls he potted to get himself into that position. Just sheer lack of concentration. 
and remarkable that both of them have missed so many pots into that left-hand middle pocket and the vast majority of their errors have been because they've caught the red or colour too thick. One. Eight. Interestingly, Robertson has now scored 202 more points than Ting. And he's only one frame ahead. And that's confirmation. Numerical dominance not translating into actual dominance. it is easy to lose a match when you've scored more points my co-commentator in the 1997 15. world 15. final Stephen Hendry up against Ken Doherty another member of our team this week Stephen scored more points but lost the match time in the match as well, that Ding sort of created his first opportunity at the beginning of the frame. 16. That excellent long pot and opening the, the reds up. He has shown good focus and good attitude today in both his matches. He's not been at his best one. but he's stuck in there. Twenty two. Now Robertson take the cue ball. Two reds at the top of the bunch. Try and get the joint of the two right in the middle of both. He won't play this with too much pace because he's got the red to right middle. I thought he would play it a little bit harder than that. Had to play it with more pace. I know he was possibly scared of pushing the red close to this left corner pocket, but that was a little bit negative, a little bit tentative, for a better word. Well, you can see he stormed on both reds. Hey, Robertson, 27.
one. Well, there's been some easy pots missed into that left middle tonight, but that was a beautiful pot, tight under the black cushion. Neil Robertson, one. That shot is so difficult on a really fast surface like this. So difficult. And I think from his gesticulation there, he thought the cue ball might have deviated as well. this where everything's in the open where your safety play has got to be so good one mistake now can easily cost the frame so finding that ball cushion is a premium not a great shot that I think he's not done any damage. Got the red much too thick. It always looked fraught with danger. Playing the red over towards the pink. Well, Stephen, over to you. He missed that by a mile. Well over to me but I've got no words I was passing the book I couldn't believe it one well, let's look at this again Anyway, touch a touch of drag, and if you decelerate through the cue ball slightly, that's what can happen. You can miss thin. Then the shot with a touch of help inside. Five. Astonishing miss, though, you have to say. What a chance for Ding Junhui to level. After looking for all the world to be going 5 2 behind. Six. Right now, there are so many similarities between this match and the one that Ding won this afternoon against John Higgins. Thirteen. Fourteen. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-nine.
30. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. Not going to need the awkward red. This red and a black will be enough. 43. Neil Robertson needing a snooker in this frame. 44. 51. It's been a good performance from Ding Jim Lee to get back level in this match. Okay, he's been helped by some strange misses from his opponent. But all you can do is come to the table and play what's there. And that's what he's done. And the little flick off the ground helps. Robertson, 39 points adrift, 35 on, so needs one four-point penalty snooker. Last red, black, and all the colours to force a respotted black. Tall order, but not impossible. Especially after this. He really does make a habit of winning frames he's got no right to win. Not just needing one snooker, but sometimes three or four. Foul. Neil Robertson. Four. Not called a miss, of course, because Robertson required a snooker. Mm, after much deliberation, and with his hand on the table, Ding gets to play again. In other circumstances, Robertson might have taken that one on, but there was no way because the only colour he can pot with this last red is the black.
It's tense stuff out there. Both players recognising what a big frame this is. And we're going to see something here we don't often see these days in a match between two world-class players. We're going to see five consecutive frames lasting over 20 minutes. Well, I suspected this much. One. Robertson has gifted the frame to Dink. I very much doubt he'll come back to the Six. table if he gets the chance, certainly if the yellow goes in. No way. Eight. Eleven. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-six. With the chances that have been presented, Neil Robertson quite conceivably could have won this match. 6-2. As it is, it's 4-4. Everything to play for. Thank you. In our first quarter-final of frame. this Champion of Champions, you, no, eight frames have been played. They have been shared equally by Ding and Robertson. This is their 14th meeting. Only two before this have gone the distance, both on a big occasion. Robertson beat Ding 6-5 in the first round of the Masters in 2013. Ding beat Robertson 4-3 in the final of the PTC Grand Finals that same year. You get the feeling this could go all the way as well.
pretty even in the pod success. Although Robertson will rue quite a few balls that have got away that he should have potted, that he normally does pot. Double to the right middle. One. Shot to nothing. Wasn't going to leave much should he missed it. Can he hold for the red immediately above the black? Up to the right corner, will he have to play just a little tiny little cannon? Like to hold, but has he? Mm, looking at the body language, he may have travelled just a bit too far. Eight. Mm, tight. think in these situations your first impression the situation is always the right one I was looking at something very positive here this is aggressive you can see where the cue ball's travelling you may feel it can just bring the cue ball off the bunch and take it back up to the bulk end and play this as kind of a shot to nothing the shot time commensurate with the importance of it Robertson, eight. Well, in the end, there was nowhere near. Look at what he's left. So he possibly felt it was a, a calculated risk, Neil Robertson. But it was a risk. One. How costly is it going to be? reactions of the cue ball off the reds that intervened there and Ding judged that to perfection this is where he really excels in and around the black eight Nine. You play a little, a little cannon here, the two reds above the black. Just gently brush the cue ball off those. Just like that. Really just play these cannons at a the, the sixteen optimum pace. Doesn't he? He plays them too hard or too soft. Seventeen. Oh, seems to play them the right way. Twenty-four. 
And the four reds above the blacks, below the pink, the right hand side one of those. Little cannon on that one. Wow, he <laughs> missed the cannon. Incredible. Foul. Incredible. Thing you know, 25 near Robertson 7. You can't believe it. I can't believe it. And in the end, to add insult to injury, a 14 point switcheroo. Deprived of seven and giving seven away. In that kind of match though, isn't it? Every time you think one player's getting into a rhythm and ready to dominate the match, all of a sudden a you know, unforced error creeps in. They do crop up, but you're right, no discernible pattern. The old dab down the table he's used quite a few times this evening. One. Nice bit of plantage there. Ding Jun Wheat. Don't think there'll be any more points coming. But the, and the opportunity to get that cue ball glued to the bolt cushion. I think the dead weight roll up to the, the green is pretty risky. Maybe off the green and behind the brown. Yeah, well played. One. Nice touch.
quần Cubal was always going into a congested area of the table there. So not ideal position at all. One of those frames where nothing is coming easy for either player. Six. Just coming up to the three hour mark in the match. That's the one big surprise. It's been lengthier than I think anyone anticipated. And still plenty of snooker to come. Teach on high six. But the prize is worth the graft. Now that inventiveness could be a frame changer. And it all kind of started, didn't it, when we pointed a blue a couple of shots ago, where he must have known the cue ball was cannon in the yellow. It was kind of a nothing shot. Then was forced to play a containing safety shot and left Neil Robertson a red. I think he would have played a good safety shot instead of potting that blue. Would have kept the advantage. Free. And again, Four. beautiful cueing. Hardly seemed to hit that hard at all. Just all due to exceptional technique and touch. And all the more laudable given the state of the match. Which, let's face it, is on a knife edge. Absolutely beautifully. No. I'd be absolutely thrilled to see where that cue ball's landed. Ten. Couldn't have worked out better. Yeah, this shot here. Seventeen. I can really see the point of that. Strange shot. Level board. Now, if Robertson pots four reds with four high value colours here, he will still need the awkward 18. red under the top cushion. But of course, with the, the black being on its spot, he does have the facility to obtain pretty good position on that red. Twenty-four. 
32, 33. Thirty nine, forty, it has to be just enough angle and force the cue ball over. Just the red, then, you know, heroics with positional play here, forty seven. 48. Could this be the turning point? The first two reds of this break were exceptional. The opener and then the really well cued red to keep it going. 48. Neil Robertson, 48. Playing the snooker and for extra insurance. Putting the black safe. Will he come to regret that? You wouldn't expect Neil Robertson to miss this snooker off one cushion, but yellow is in the middle of the table, so there's plenty of room around it. And the first day of a, a brand new cloth, sometimes judging the slide of the cushion can make you look silly sometimes. Foul. Yeah, missed it by a long way. And a free ball. Well, free ball given. Most importantly, if he puts the free ball, he won't need to go to a respotted black. Yes. Green ball. Played that with an element of safety. Two. Obviously, if he'd put the green and just played it dead weight, it'd have been on the yellow to its own pocket, but made sure of the three points, and the two points, I should say, made sure of the free ball. Now he can win. Well, this could be quite a turnaround. Ding Chun Hai, two. Free ball called, of course, by Marcel Eckhart because Ding could not see the extreme sides of the yellow because of the green. If you can't see both sides, free ball it is. Two cushions for the green in the same pocket. There was two. It hasn't hit it hard enough. 
the great pot. The green is cuttable and the natural angle will take the cue ball towards the brown, move it off the cushion. So this is a big shot. Five. Hmm. This brown is not nice. This is a horrible shot. But with the black removed, could he steal the frame? That was not easy. Engine hoy fast. Brown came back off the far jaw. Ding must have thought that he was going to leave it on for his opponent. You know, one has an, an easy opportunity. Only needs the Brown, Neil Robertson, which may tempt him to play a pot. Now looking at the cut to the yellow pocket. Given the way this frame has gone, given the way the last couple of frames have gone, if Ding could somehow plunder this one and take a 5-4 lead, psychologically, it would be very tough for Robertson to win. Hence the massive importance of this exchange. Another tempter for Neil Robertson. Playing the safety shot because there's no need to, need to be walking around the table if you're playing the pot. He only needs the brown. Well, in the end, he did go for the pot, which does surprise me. I don't know why he felt the need to walk around the table and have a look. I think he changed his mind on shot selection. into the black after pot and brown. It's 
good safety shot required. Mm, very clever. Thank very, you. Very, very clever. A tap on the table from Neil Robertson. Lengthiest frame of the match so far, and without any doubt whatsoever, the most vital. And that shot from Ding there, it was a peach. And a miss. Thanks for now five. Well, there's no doubt to me at Thank this you. point in this match who the most nervous looking is is Neil Robertson. Body language of both players. Ding looks far more composed at the moment. cushion. It's close enough to make this a very tough pot, but Ding Junhui is normally very good at these, playing them slow. Quite a beautiful one in the match against John Higgins into the yellow pocket, dead weight. Yeah, excellent. It keeps his head so still. Five. You get a chance to see that again. It's just incredible how still he keeps his head. Would have loved to have seen the cue ball run on like an extra couple of inches. Eleven. What a finish. Is he cutting this in? Eleven. Well, to me, that never looked on, but I mean, obviously it was, but he was a long way away. And when missing it, he's been fortunate not to leave a pot on. Especially tough with below centre striking of the cue ball. Not surprised he undercut it. Tuned in and see the score 63 63 with just the black on the table. You might assume this is a respotted black, it isn't. But it's the most crucial ball of the match so far. should be able to play a good safety shot here. Maximum distance between cue ball and object ball. Try and get that cue ball tight in the bolt cushion. Well, I don't know if he half went for the double. I mean, that's abso absolutely butchered, really, the shot he's played there. You can't believe it. Has he left the black to the middle? Well, body language from Neil Robertson would suggest no. An incredible shot from Ding there.
I mean, it looks from that angle it cuts easily. And I don't think the knife is on. It's too thin a cut. Thin off. It was almost on. Neil Robertson. Neil Robertson's heart would have been going 50 to the dozen. What a frame. What a frame it was. Ding erred right at the end. He should have stolen it. But Neil Robertson leads 5-4. We've seen a series of sizeable breaks today, some quality snooker, but there's nothing like a black ball shootout. See, I told you it was nowhere near enough, Phil. <laughs> to be fair, from the, the first view I seen, I thought it was too thin. It wasn't that thin, it was about quarter ball, so yeah, it was a, obviously the reason Neil played it so hard is, was to avoid the enough, so. 11. Yeah, never in doubt, was it? What a dogfight on the colours there. What a dogfight this match has turned out to be. Our run of five consecutive frames of over 20 minutes was punctuated by one that lasted 33 minutes. Late night drama here on day one of the Champion of Champions. Robertson must be feeling good, but not secure. It's frame 10. No, yeah, Robertson reminds me of this. She went to a decider now. Ding, was I thought after putting that. Beautiful long blue, then pot in the, the pink. The cubo was going to give him some sort of pot in the black. He did attempt a very thin cut to the green pocket. Miss Neil Robertson six. Touching ball. Yeah.
plays a lot of those little negative shots. You know, Robertson just dead weight cue balls. Kind of nothing shots, but not leaving anything. But not really gaining any advantage either. I always think we truly could find something better to play, but then obviously at this stage of the match he doesn't want to give anything away to his opponent. This is a more aggressive shot. Yes, the primary motivation going into any match is to win. I think the way this contest has gone for Robertson, now he's desperate not to lose because he knows he would have multiple regrets. Him taking this on again, another example of his head. This will not move at all. Beautiful. One. Beautiful technique. I think he struggles in his long game when he has to hit the ball hard, but those ones dropping in at dead weight is brilliant at them. Eight. Nine. Sixteen. Seventeen. Ding Junho is 17. You wouldn't expect Ding to miss that, but he seemed to get down pretty quickly. He didn't even look at any of the bolt colours. as good as he could do in terms of position. Hmm. I thought he played for the black. I thought the black was potable. Obviously not. Begs the question, why wouldn't he take the cue ball or attempt to get the cue ball further up to bolt? He's still playing this yellow. Hmm. I thought he'd missed it, Phil. What a fluke. We're seeing so many, you know, in the Championship League all last week. One after the other. Red. Yeah, he is. Oh, 
very dodgy. Four. Decent pot that, but let's see where the cue balls ended up. There may not be many more points being scored at this visit. Six. Looks from this view that he's hampered by the green. Take this on, but he's slightly, but he can get to the middle of the cue ball. Neil mm. Robertson. Six. The red next to the black. I presume doesn't go, but he has left the red to the far right corner. Mm. Pretty comfortable shot because you can screw back for the black and you won't be leaving anything. So not a lot of pressure on this. Expect him to get it. One. Not clean by any means, but just about in. He's over screwed the cue ball. Maybe it's just a sign of the tension, the situation. This black's missable. Again, not the cleanest of pots, but it's in. Eight. Nine. For two players so positionally proficient, it's quite clear the nerves are biting here. Ding Jun Hui nine. And again, a very negative safety shot. Very easy to get the cue ball back to bulk there. Just doesn't want to leave anything. Well, the possibility of leaving Neil this red that he's playing the safety off is a pot. And that's the problem when you play these containing safety shots. You risk yourself putting in trouble the next time you come to the table. Miss Neil Robertson four. Oh, miss. First attempt Robertson. too narrow, second attempt Six. too wide. Ten penalty points resulted. And a free ball. And this time leaving a free ball, for what it's worth. a really accomplished, calm and efficient referee, Marcel Lecart. That's why he was nominated to officiate in the World Championship final this year, became the youngest ever referee in Snooker's showpiece match.
Well, the plant looks pretty well set to the pocket, but I'm going to get the cue ball out of there. He's looking at possibly in playing it. Does he nudge the pink out? One. I don't think I'd be playing a snooker here. I think I'd like to leave the cue ball tight in the bolt cushion and make Ding play off the bunch of reds. Very easy. To stick one over a corner pocket. He's not, he's played the snooker. Yeah, All that means one. is Ding will just come off one cushion and rest into the reds again. I think if you left Ding near the, the green pocket somewhere, tight in the cushion, it would have been a pretty difficult safety shot to get safe. Brilliant shot. It's kind of helped being that side of the table ding. He couldn't see both sides of the red, so he had a kind of a guide to be able to play that thin safety shot. I might be able to pot this left corner. And a miss. Neil Robertson, four. Robertson edges one point ahead. What a match this has been. He needs cover here. Is there a gap? There is. to any angle in the blue to bring the cue ball down this end of the table that's the question it can't be much because he had a look at a bolt colour and yeah, dead straight really tried to force an angle there six Ding Junhui, six. The two reds near the black spot. The one furthest away from the cushion goes. It's a tough shot under this pressure, but you think, should it go in? A chance to win this match. One. Cued it beautifully. And now compromising with position. 
on a sixpence for the blue. Six. Seven. Is Robertson going to leave this pressure cooker with the desired result? Thirteen. Fourteen. but as a left-hander 20 you only need the red he gets that far so he can he gets on it nicely he can play it dead weight 21 and on day one the pocket might be more accommodating than later in the week Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Well, just what he didn't want. Absolutely dead straight on the pink. That cue ball just travelled forward another inch. It'd have been perfect. Very tough. Thirty four. To get absolutely dead weight position. Only needs the red. He could play it in a way to bring the cue ball back up to the bulk end. It was some degree of safety. Obviously the slower you play these, the more chance you give the red of going in, but the other side of the coin is if you miss it, you leave it for your opponent. So I think possibly red twice across the table, cue ball up behind yellow and brown. Well, even that shot doesn't look straightforward because the red's so close to the cushion. I think I'd be tempted with a pot fill. It's match ball. I'm sure if a couple more colours had been safe, he might have taken it on. Neil Robertson, 30. Just hedging his bets. Played the second. Oh. My preferred shot choices and played it superbly well. Quality shot from Neil Robertson. Firmly in the driver's seat now in this match. Turns away in disgust. He can't believe. He looks like he's sold the match. This red goes. Nothing to do with the cue ball. Make sure the pot. You can even leave the cue ball in behind the black should you miss. One. If you can ever have a pressure free frame and match ball, that was it. Robertson still taking nothing for granted.
You saw the black there sticking to the the top cushion and dropping in. He's 37 ahead, 27 on the table. Eight. Poor old Ding needs three snookers. Neil Robertson, eight. It's possible, but winning a frame when you're on the the verge of defeat from this kind of position, that's really rare. Two. He's not been at his best, Neil Robertson. But I think overall, he's deserved the victory. Certainly the heavier scorer of the two. Breaks of 139, 104, 62, 56, and three more over 40. Ding, though, has played his part in what's been a really absorbing first night encounter. And he's not quite finished yet. I remember on one occasion in the semi-final of the China Open against Gary Wilson, he didn't win that match, but he needed multiple snookers in the last frame, and he got so many. Problem was, Wilson kept escaping. Your Robertson, seven, Surely now, five, that eight. is that, five indeed. Five. Ding smiles. He's a real sportsman, but he must be disappointed. 